it's talking to me. If yeah, this shit ain't really about bread, uh, she got a fatty, throw it all up on me. But baby, I just run with the head. Yeah. And all of my niggas, they ride with me. Just like a bag and stuff on the pig. Uh, that shit ain't that wish if you talk about me. My niggas pullin' up and you dead. Uh, I look at how I was on, she fuckin' with me. She said she like a nigga. Welcome back. We coming back with scapegoat interviews, man. I know some niggas been asking about this shit. Now we coming back with it. Now, who am I speaking to right now? Yo, you feel me? Hot for one five nine. You were right. shout out scapegoat radio. Shout out for rich. I'm already knowing. I, I feel that, bro. So, you know, first of all, let's tell people about yourself, bro. Like, where was you born? You know, where was you raised? You know, like that type. Where um, I'm from North New Jersey. Um, Central World to be exact. No fucking West Mario. Um, mm. All right, shit like that. So let's let's talk about like how you came up. So how how was New Jersey growing up? You know, how was your childhood? I ain't gonna cap. I ain't even gonna come up here like struggle story. I needed to be like my shit was decent. You feel me? My mom did what I had to. What she had to do for us and shit like that. Um, growing up though, you feel me? I grew up in New Old Village, Norfolk Street. So, like, just being out there, you feel me, being in Norfolk in general, shit like that teach you life. Like, you feel me? It's the inner city, you know, shit get hard. You gonna grow up, see shit, but, like, it's all for the building who you is type shit. So, I say, like, just being from Norfolk, growing up how I grew up, like, that shit just made me who I am today type shit. Yeah. Yeah. We hear you. We hear you. So... Let's talk about how you got into music. Like, what what piqued your interest to get into music? What what started getting you into rapping? All right, so basically, like, with the rap and shit, I always, you feel me? I grew up on rap, you feel me? African-American, you know how that be, like, just growing up, listening to rap, your mother playing it, whatever. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna cap, I never wanted to rap, but I ain't gonna cap what, when it, what made me want to rap when I was young, was John Cena. I'm not going John to, Cena. I'm not going to cap because he used to, you feel me? He used to freestyle on TV and shit. So as His a kid. His song was him rapping. like So that shit was hard to me. So as a kid, were you a wrestling fan or was it just John Cena himself that just piqued your interest <laughs> into the music? Nah, I ain't going to cap. I ain't going to say it was whole John Cena. It was, it was other aspects, you know, just growing up listening to hip hop. Then it's like you watching wrestling, completely different aspect of Life, you feel me? It ain't got nothing to do with music. It's a nigga fly as hell, you feel me? Got that shit on, he rapping like. It was like a, a like a breath of fresh air exactly. into that culture. Yeah. It's like from our culture into that culture. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I always appreciated John Cena. But I always loved wrestling. I ain't gonna keep growing up, that was my shit. Do you think uh, wrestling influences your music in any way, sense or form from your childhood? I ain't gonna lie, no. I ain't gonna say wrestling did. I say John Cena did, but like when it came to rapping, it wasn't even like I was trying to rap for real. I say like, you feel me? Niggas pushed me to rap, like on some like joking shit. Like shit that influenced me is more like Cartoon Network. You feel me? Growing up just liking different shit. You feel me? Liking skating, um, listening to niggas like Chief Keef. You feel me? Lil Uzi, Cardi. You feel me? Those are the people you listened to growing up as a yeah, kid? definitely. Like, heavy, if I could, like, name influences, like, for sure, Chief Keef, for sure, Uzi Cardi, ASAP Rocky, for sure, and Duop Kane. I'm like, my father right there. I ain't gonna cap. All right, so let's let's talk about your, fir your first couple times, like, getting into music, recording music. How can you describe mm -hmm. that experience? All right, so boom, I ain't gonna care. I got a whole, whole story for this shit. So boom, right? It was COVID. So like my son, my son Zunati, we're, shout out, shout out Nadi, man, that's my boy. But like, he was rapping for like, shits and giggles on some like, joking shit. And you know, we bored, it's quarantine. So I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna download the app too. I'm, I downloaded BandLab, shout out BandLab, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, so I downloaded BandLab, made some shit for fun. Me and Nadi made some shit. Shit was fake decent. I ain't gonna cap. Shit was ass. But it had potential, you feel me? So, you feel my son 2-4, my son Sa, he seen the potential before, like, niggas even peeped it. So, he started taking me and Naughty to the stool, you feel me? Me, him, uh, Naughty, Prophet, Jumbo, you feel me? He took me to my first stool session, and that's when, like, I really peeped, like, 
This shit fake out, right, you feel me? So, first time I went to the stool, my son Jumbo Earl, a nigga threw up, cause he was too fried. So I'm like, I made some shit. <laughs> I made some shit. And everybody was like, yo, this shit fake hard, you heard? So I'm like, I'm gonna I'm fuck with it, I'm gonna keep doing it. Then the, um, the second time, it was my prom day, me and, me and Naughty prom day. We said, fuck prom, we went straight to the stool. That was the first day I got hot, all that, so like, for me, that was like the first couple times really like making music, really being serious, like not playing type shit. Oh, all right. That's an interesting story. Mm -hmm. Shout out Jumbo, man. Word. Shout out Jumbo. <laughs> you seem like a very important piece of this uh yeah. of this story right here. That boy is factor, man. <laughs> I said Jumbo. I'm already knowing. So my next question for you is um you see you were a prominent member of uh Pro Rich. You wanna talk about how that came about? Yeah. Um basically that all kind of tie into the first story because before Pro Rich um, Sa, 24, Profit, and Jumbo, they had their own collective, and they shit was called LSD. And they was rapping before, like, me, Naughty, and whoever else in Pro Rich type shit, like. So, over time, niggas just came up with the name Pro Rich. Like, it started as Instagram, group chat, nothing crazy, just, like, niggas from high school type shit. And that shit kind of expanded into, like, music, making that shit Pro Rich Records or whatever. So... I'm about, I've been pro rich since that shit started, for real, like, that shit just like a name, a change of names, for real, for real, and the expansion of different people joining, shit like that. Mm. Right, right. Next question, um, you able to walk us through your creative process and recording a song, like, what inspires you during that moment, like, how does, how do you get the material going? Um... Really, I ain't never been like a writing ass nigga, I ain't gonna lie. So like, when it come to like recording, it just be straight punch in, I ain't gonna catch. Like whatever come to my head, whatever flow can get there, then that's how the song gonna carry. Usually, when it come to like making shit, if I could get that first two lines, first line, I could run the whole song. Like, I don't need to stop nothing, I'm good. So like, usually I just go about finding the flow first. Once I find the flow, then it's like, it's easy. But like what inspire me when it come to making music, just overall expressing myself, you feel me? Whatever I got going on at the time being, whatever I'm thinking about, you feel me like right. shit like that. Right, right. That's you know that's so Steve. So we here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, you know. Yeah. If anybody knows we not in Jersey right now. Not so in Jersey. Talk about your transition from Jersey to East Pennsylvania, how, how is it? Like, can you tell us what's the difference, you know, for people that don't know? All right, so basically, I probably, I probably left Jersey, i say about like seven months. Some, some of that nature. I moved out here in May, where, and mind you, I'm coming from Jersey, like, I was living in Nook my whole life, same block, whole life. So it's like, coming out here was figure 360, because like, in Nook all day, you gonna hear Tired screeching, you gonna hear loud music blasting, you feel me, sirens and shit. So it's like coming out here, this should be pure silence some days, and it's like, feel me, and you might not see, you might see a like coming from where I'm coming from, like you not walking past no white man, like you feel me, you not walking past no Asian man with his kids walking a dog, like that's not something you see. So like coming out here, that shit was feel like an adjusting process, but like I ain't gonna cap this shit got boring, I ain't gonna lie. So it's like. You feel me? Just finding ways to, um, you know, enjoy my own personal time by myself type shit. You feel me? Shit like that. It gave me more time with myself. I got to learn myself a little more. Got so, to experiment with music or whatever I want to do creatively. So for it being boring, would you consider that a good or a bad thing for you? Um, I say both because I ain't going to lie. Like, I, I, I've been... In phases where I'm just in the crib, you feel me? Like, I'm, I'm a, I used to be a homebody. I used to be an inside boy, like, you feel me? But as I got older, you feel me? I spent time outside. Like, I got used to being outside, you feel me? Having fun with friends, going to New York every week. So it's like, it's fake adjusting process. But like, you know, it's always good to isolate, you feel me? Get your mind right. Focus on what needs to be focused on. 
that have fun later. So I feel like me coming out here was for that, like just understanding of the importance of isolation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always good to understand like adjusting for you and having that isolation time to yourself. No, so right. next topic, uh, last of a dying breed, mm -hmm. LODB. Let's talk about that for a second. Um, what, what's your connection to that? How does that affect you in your career? I, majorly, I ain't gonna lie, like, majorly. It's so crazy, because before I even knew them, I seen them on the gram, like, and I seen a brand, I'm like, yo, this shit hard. But to start everything, they fake connect back to me starting to rap in the first place, so boom. You feel me, Sa? I met them through, like, my son Sa, my son 2-4. He already knew them and shit, I ain't know them. So basically, like, like when I first started rapping, my son Sa was embracing me, you feel me? He was putting me on his songs on SoundCloud. We dropped two songs, um, Triple Beam and um, another freestyle type shit. I forgot the name of it. But we dropped them drums. And my son Kev, Kev, that's my boy for real. Word. Kev was really embracing me like, yo, who honcho, you feel me? Just gassing it for real. And like when I fake got into contact with Kev, like Kev was telling me like, like, yo, keep rapping, like, you hard, like, you got it, you feel me? And I felt like I ain't gonna cap, if it wasn't for Kev and 2-4, like, I probably wouldn't even keep rapping, because, like, niggas like them really showed me, like, bro, you got something, like, you gotta keep pushing that shit, keep doing that shit, and you want a whole different type of timing. So, that's how I kind of came into fruition, like, just me starting to rap, Kev was fake pushing me, showing me love, and it's like, you feel me? Vice versa back. Plus they close hard, so it ain't nothing to show love back when the shit when you genuinely fuck with it, you feel me? So it's like that's family right there. Plus Ty, you feel me? I met Ty, I bought some pants off Ty. Like before we even was like cool type shit. Like I just bought some pants off him. Like y'all fuck with these pants. Yeah, that was that. Like ever since then that's family though, you heard. Right. Continue on the topic of L O D B last of a dying breed. I remember they had a show. I think yeah. it was in Jersey, if I'm correct. The the Renaissance. No, nah, that was in um, Brooklyn. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Yeah. My apologies. That was in Brooklyn. And I seen you perform at that joint. Yeah. Uh, talk about um performing live to an audience. How was that experience? I ain't gonna cap. I'll be, I'm a little shy, man. I ain't gonna lie. So it's like, shit like that, be a little nerve wracking. Not really, though. I ain't gonna cap because I, I grew up dancing and shit, so. I'm always, I always was performable a little bit, but basically, that shit was the experience. You know, they do the annual renaissance show every year, so coming from like last year or the year prior to that, shit was just vibe. so coming to, you feel me, a new year, they came different, you feel me, but that shit, whole different location coming from New Jersey to New York, and that shit was packed out too, that shit was rocking, so you feel me? I ain't gonna lie, when it come to like live shows and shit, that should be cool. Like, feel me? As long as the crowd like interacting and shit, I could rock out, I don't really, feel me? I don't really think too much of it. I just need me some shades when I'm on that motherfucker, I ain't gonna lie. Give me some shades, a little LQ, I'm good. That, no, nah, that's hard, I'm really feeling that. I didn't even know the Renaissance was every year. Yeah, it's an every year, yearly show. You me? might see me out there next year, the year after. Who knows, man? Exactly. <laughs> man, now did you have you ever performed anywhere else besides that? Yeah, um, I performed like a handful of times. Shout out System, you were. They show love too. They got niggas they first show because I ain't never performed before then. But yeah, they book pat. They had book pro rich and shit. So I usually be performing at like Meat Locker and shit in my clear. But yeah, they show mad love. I fuck with um I fuck with system, I fuck with Meat Locker. They good people over there. Show love, you feel me? Plus the shows over there at Meat Locker, that should be rocking too. That should be turned. Mm. Mm, bad, bad. So back to Pro Rich. You know, there's there's other prominent members in there too as as like Valencio Two, yeah. uh, Snow, mm -hmm. you know, we got so there's so many members in Pro Rich, man. It's just hard to name all of them. Yeah, but a lot of members, man. but talk about that. Talk about meeting different people from different areas in that group. H how was that? Yo, that was something. I ain't gonna cap. You feel me? Um, 
before like ATL, like I wasn't that in tune with niggas. Like I knew with niggas. Talk about ATL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. That's that's all gonna tie in. So boom, right? So you feel me? Saw was fake. I wouldn't say he was recruiting niggas, but you know his niggas be cool with. So he just making them pro rich type shit. And it's like, you feel me? I've been through Balenci, I've been through Snow, just off of music base and shit. I ain't know them personally. So it's like, when we had, took that trip to Atlanta, me, Snow, who else? Winter, you feel me? All the Jersey homies already, you feel me? Geisha. Um, it was just basically like connecting with each other. And it's like, plus we was all in the B&B with each other all day for three days, three, yeah, three, four days. So it's like, you ain't got no choice but to talk to niggas, you feel me? You ain't got no choice but to make friends. So it's like, I felt like Atlanta was really like bridging the gaps for real. Like it solidified everything. Like, so talk about the creative process now that you've actually, you have your network, you know all of them from the internet, but yeah. now you guys are in the same building, in the same room together. Talk about the creative process behind that. How is it different from, you know, just networking online? Um, I feel like it's more, it's more of a, like, it's easier to build a um, friendship with somebody when you in their face, you feel me? When you in their face talking to them, even if it ain't, like, about music or about creating, like, you feel me? Like, the type of person I am, before I want to, like, create music with niggas or work with niggas, I want to be a friend first because that's what's going to make the music better, you feel me? Like, we both understand what we want out of each other, building that friendship, so it's like, just bonded with niggas, that shit made everything better. Like it made it made music sound better. It made everybody understand like we got a mission to complete, you feel me? Put the egos aside or whatever. Like we got a goal, so you feel me. And what do you think that goal is? Um I don't even wanna be corny and be like to make it. You were, it's never it's never it's, corny. Every goal, yeah, you know every like, goal is, you know, real. Facts. Um just to, to get as far as possible with this shit, man. You feel me? Like, I believe in this shit. I ain't gonna cap, like, I don't got no doubt in this shit. I feel like it's only a matter of time, you heard? So, the goal is just to make it as far as possible. However that may be. But, so now that you're here in Bethlehem, you know, you're still doing the music. They do have any plans to, you know, perform out here, you know, expand the, the pro rich agenda. Expand yeah. the LODB agenda, like, nah, what, fact. what's the purpose here? Um, to be honest, when it comes to, like, performing here, I'm with wherever, like, I'm trying to take over the world, I ain't gonna lie to you, like, I'm trying to get this shit to Hong Kong and back, world. so, it don't matter where I'm at, you feel me, you feel me, the mission gotta be completed, and the goal and the campaign gotta be pushed regardless, like, you feel me, like, Pro Rich 159, LODB, Fast Life, all that shit is like, that's us, you feel me? That's that's who I am type shit. Like, that shit just an expression of me. So it's like, wherever I go, you're going to see that. Because that's just, that's just us. So you have any long-term goals from five years from now? Like, where you see this music thing taking you? Like, you got mm -hmm. like an end location, end, you know. Or oh, like, like the last, the last, the the final chapter. Well, whatever, whatever that may be for you. Yeah. Um. To be honest, I just want like you feel me inspire niggas to be themselves, man. You feel me? Do what they want to do, cause like, feel me? Growing up, growing up in no word like that shit like one track. You feel me? You you either gonna rap if you rapping, you gonna rap like some killing shit. You feel me? Or like some drill shit. You ain't coming like melodic or different vibes. Or you gonna play sports or whatever, or you gonna be in the streets. So it's like, I'm just trying to show niggas like, you feel me? You could be, you could be the nigga that do other shit. You could be the fly nigga on the block. You could be the nigga that like comic books. You feel me? Like I feel like that's my goal. Like just to show niggas like you could do, you could do you, and still be that nigga. Like it don't matter what you doing type shit. But when it come to like five year goal, I say. I don't know, that shit ain't even really about numbers. Like, of course I want, you feel me, succeed. I want to blow, whatever, you feel me. But at the end of the day, I just want, you feel me, be the best version of myself, you feel me, that's all. Whether that's me making it or it ain't. Like, 
feel me? Just fulfillment and sustainability all around, feel me? But the goal is definitely to make it. The goal is definitely to, you mean? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that by any means. But so do you have any upcoming songs coming up, upcoming projects that you may put out or that you're featured on? Um, Something for the fans to look forward to? As of right now, I'm dropping mad shit. I ain't gonna cap you for me. It's 2024. I'm coming more everything, more vids, more songs. You feel me? I don't got no word on no tapes or no EPs right now. You feel me? But definitely just be on the lookout. Peep everything because some shit is on the way. You feel me? And I'm, you feel me? This year, we try, I'm trying to take this shit over. I ain't gonna cap. Uh, Not gonna lie. You got any. You have any last words to the fans? You know, if anybody was looking forward to you, like what what would be your advice? You know, what would you tell tell people coming up? Like, um, what's your shit. message? So my message, I say, shit, just be authentic, word, be yourself. You feel me? Think positively. The world gonna reflect on that. You feel me? You believe in yourself. Everybody else gonna believe in you. You feel me? So it's like that's my message, word. Shout out my peoples. Shout out, shout out Lufo, shout out 159, we're, shout out Pro Rich. Feel me? Shout out my niggas. That's it. All right, man. It was a pleasure talking to you. You know, we got a puncher on 159, straight out of Newark, Newark, New Jersey. Yeah. You know, this has been Scapegoat Interviews. You know, stay tuned for more.